hi guys welcome back to my channel in this video i'm going to show you the easiest way fastest way and simplest way to show to sew a shirt dress you guys know i'm about the easy life the fastest life the simplest life so this tutorial is basically the simplest and easiest way to cut and sew a shirt dress in no time if this is your first time here you're welcome to my internet home i'm adal Jew. If you like what you see please stick around by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that whenever I post a video you get notified so this is the fabric I'm starting with is already on a fold of two now the length of this fabric is 40 because the length of my gown in normal day is around 40 37 so from the top of my fabric i'm going to mark 2.5 inches for my bottom placket so i did this across the entire length of the fabric then i connected my markings with a ruler so i'll have a defined piece like okay this is the part where the bottom placket is starting and where it is ending so i connected the lines together when I was done connecting the lines together, the next thing I went ahead to do was I folded the allowance. Now this is more like, you know how we take the allowance for our zipper and we want to sew our dresses? It's something like that we do for the bottom placket. It's just that it's the bottom placket and it's in front. So I went ahead to fold it to the other side so I don't get confused when I'm cutting my fabric. So when I was done folding, I folded the fabric again into four. Now I have a fold of four, which is like the normal folding we do when we want to sew. So this is the back of the dress. And this is the front where you have the bottom placket slash zip allowance skinny. Yeah, that's the front. So from the top of the fabric for the front, I marked 2.5 inches downwards for my neck depth. then from the center i marked three inches for my neck width i had to go over so you will notice that i'll be going over this thing over and over again the fabric is kind of slippery i don't know if the chalk was really showing for you guys so please if you're not seeing the chalk very well just bear with me like the color of the fabric he <laughs> rejected a lot of chalks so when i was done marking out um, the neck dimension i carved them in together then for the back of my fabric i marked one inch downwards which is like somehow the standard we do for most of the back of our dresses then for my neck width i marked three inches same thing i did for the front so when i was done marking i just connected my markings together when we are trying to get sort of a round neck yeah something like that for the shirt dress so this is just a basic shirt dress not so much drama so from the center of my fabric i extended my tape backwards and i marked 9.5 inches now my shoulder is 8.5 inches but you guys know we always need one inch to shape out our armhole so i marked 9.5 inches for my shoulder point then from that point i marked half an inch downwards this is to form the shoulder slant can see what I'm doing there then I, I placed my tape at that point again from the top and I marked eight inches downwards this is for my armhole point and my armhole curve so when I was done marking where my armhole curve will stop I used my chalk and I just drew the armhole curve the outline of the armhole curve you guys know how it looks like then from the center of my fabric i marked out my bust now my bust is 8.5 but because this is a shirt dress i'm going to have like one extra inch allowance so plus sewing allowance i just marked like two extra inch added to my normal measurement do you understand two extra inch added to my normal measurement so at that point i took my under bust point and I marked my underboss measurement. Whatever I'm marking here is plus two extra inch allowance. Do you understand? Because your shirt or your shirt dress is not necessarily tight. They are more like free. So you don't want to make it fitted. So I have like two extra inch 
um allowance added to my normal measurement so i just went ahead to mark from that point that's my underboss point which i just finished marking now i extended my tape downwards by 13 inches and i marked my hip point i know this is always a question for a lot of people like okay from your underboss if you're marking a, a a gown how will you know where your hips is this is where it is from your underboss down to your hips is 13 inches sometimes 12 inches so i marked my hip point and i just marked my hip measurements then i went to the hem whatever i took for my hips i also marked that same measurement for the hem because we have like a straight curve from the hips down to that point so when i was done marking out all my measurement i just connected them with a ruler from the top from the bottom to the top now one thing with sewing is even when you're done marking out your measurement and you are sure please verify again even if you verify before before you cut verify again okay thank me later yeah okay <laughs> so when i was done marking them um, marking out my measurement i just followed the outline and cut the one for the front first then i went ahead to cut the one for the back then i just followed suit i cut the shoulder the shoulder slant my armhole and the side if you're watching up to this point and you if you've watched up to this point i don't know what kind of english i'm speaking <laughs> if you've watched up to this point and you uh, yeah you like what you see you're enjoying what you see why not just give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like okay join my family i want you to stick around i love you now back to the tutorial so after i verified my measurement although that was off camera i went ahead to cut out my working piece so guys this is a working piece and we are going to start devouring it right now yeah one thing you was always do is notch the center so i notched the center for that placket i also did i did same for the down part of the front and i also did same for the down part of the back very necessary you need it to be able to mark your um dress the right way so this is the back and to start sewing the back i need to mark out my dart i have done this a lot of in a lot of videos but i'm still going to do it for you guys again you guys know i love you okay so i'm sh i'm going to show you how to mark out your dart so from the shoulder point i extended my tape downwards and marked nine inches which is like the standard um length for you to pick your the back dart then from that point i extended my tape downwards again I marked 11 inches now this is the length of the dart so after I marked 11 inches I used my ruler again just forgive me guys if you are not seeing the chalk very well this fabric rejected a lot of chalks like white was not showing pink was not showing yellow was not showing blue is the one that managed to sew so just please bear with me so from the center of my fabric I marked 4 inches and I did this across the entire length of the dart then i connected my markings with a straight line when i was done this dart is 11 inches so we are trying to get the center which is like 5.5 inches so after marking 5.5 inches i kind of marked out the width of the dart which is around one inch then i just used my ruler to draw out the outline of the dart which is what you are seeing here it's more like a triangle facing each other back to back So this is what it looks like or this is what it looks like when i was done drafting the dart i'm going to go over to my sewing machine and i'm going to pick the dart so i'm done picking it this is what it looks like very simple right you guys i told you it's going to be simple to sew this dress so this is what it looks like then i'm going to go over to picking the dart for the front part so before we go over to pick the dart for the front part i've already attached some gum stay to the bottom placket of the front part now before we pick it that for the front part we have to fold in that bottom placket so i'm going to fold it like so with the help of the notch i have there i'm just going to lay it at that point where the notch is so that is our center and i'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and sew along that line so where the notch is that is the center and i'm going to just click the but the hem of the bottom placket to that center part of the notch and i'm going to pin it down because we don't want 
eventualities we don't want to be sewing and it's moving it's the front part of the dress your stitches are supposed to be straight they're not supposed to be clumsy so you're supposed to pin them down okay okay <laughs> so this is what it looks like well what it looked like i don't think i'm english i'm speaking today guys forgive me i've not slept well so this is what it looked like when i was done pinning it down and i'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and i'm going to sew along that as it so this is what it looks like when i was done sewing you can see how straight i tried to make the stitches straight and i actually gave myself a pat on my back when i was done sewing you guys know the struggle to get a straight stitches it's real it's real comment down below if you're having that issue as well so this is what it looked like that was the back that was the front this is the back so i'm just going to go in so you see it more so i don't have a weaving machine like you guys know so for my raw edges i just do a zigzag stitch all over if you want to know how to lock your hem to look nice i'm going to leave an eye card here for you guys how to weave without a weaving machine or check the description box i have a video for that so when i was done with the whole shara over there i want to mark the dart for the front part so i'm just going to show you how you basically mark the dart in a shirt dress so from the top of your fabric as well you mark nine inches some people like to do it with maybe their nipple point but me i just go for the basic nine inches when is a shirt dress so from that point i extended my tape downwards and marked 11 inches something like what we did for the back dart then i drew the points so from the center of my fabric i marked four inches you guys now see why we had to fold the bottom placket before marking the dart because we actually need it to be like this so we'll get the exact center of the dress so i marked four inches across the entire length of the dart and i marked it you guys will hear my dog my dog bang just ignore okay okay we are back <laughs> okay so when i was done um marking out the length of the dart i just got the center of the dart which is like 5.5 .5 inches and from that point i drew the width of the dart which is around one inch if you want anything bigger you can go for that but this is a shirt dress it doesn't need so much fitting I actually for most of my shirt dresses i don't do my dart like i skip the dart but i'm putting a dart in this tutorial because i know a lot of people will ask so but for, for most of my shirt dresses i don't sew them with that okay that being said i just drew out the outline for my dart so this is what we have here and i'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and i'm going to pick it and of course you know this is for both sides of the front part so uh, this was what it looked like when i was done picking it and ironing it you guys know sewing and ironing go hand in hand i'm sure if you're a returning subscriber you you know me you are, you are tired of hearing this but you have to hear it once you sew you iron you can see how relaxed the dart is so when i was done picking the dart for both the front and the back i'm going to go over to join the shoulder lines of the front and the back you can see it's coming together already sewing this shirt dress is not difficult sewing a dress is not difficult okay if you're enjoying this video just give it a thumbs up i'm going to join the shoulder line on that point like so like so okay so i took out my sewing machine and i joined the shoulder line i did this for both sides of the dress both parts of the dress or both parts of the shoulder line anyone choose one then i gave it a really good pause because we want our shoulders to be well relaxed we want them to be smooth and creeps you don't want any puffy shoulder look like you have extra shoulder pad on that shoulder mm -mm, we don't want that <laughs> okay so i gave it a good press I took my time to iron it anyways i'm done so when i was done ironing the next thing i did was i took it back to my 
sewing table and i kind of spread it out because here i wanted to align the sides together now the trick to sewing a shirt dress when you want to mark you want to first of all make sure the bottom placket they lap on each other so you want to make sure that well like they lap on each other so you lap the bottom plackets together so you know the exact center of the dress before you go over to you know pinning the sides together and all that good stuff you understand now when you want to mark your shirt dress i don't know for any other person but me i mark from the front because the bottom placket is more like a guide for me already so here i'm just taking my basic measurements my bust my under bust my hips my hem now one thing i do for my shirt dress is the, the measurement my shirt dresses are the measurement i take for my bust that is what i take for my under bust so even if my bust is eight inches and my other bust is maybe 7.5 because it's a shirt dress and it's not very fitted i just take eight inches okay so that everything will look kind of straight and because it's not a fitted dress shirt dresses are not always always very fitted so you don't really want something too tight here and loose here and the dress is not coming out well do you understand so same measurement i take for my bust is what i take for my under bust but every other measurement like my hips and the hem they remain constant okay so when i was done marking out my measurements i connected them with a ruler you guys will notice i'm not using that big ruler there because i always have issues with big ruler so i used my small ruler So when I was done marking both sides, this is what we have here. I wanted to show you a close-up view or a close-up look. This is what we have here. Okay, now your shirt dress with or without it, that looks nice. I actually saw mine a, like one out of 100 times with a dart. Like the remaining 99 times, I saw them without darts and they still turn out well. So when I was done marking out, I just took it over to my sewing machine and I joined the sides. If you're enjoying this video, comment down below. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> you guys will comment a lot today because I'm high on energy. <laughs> if you're enjoying this video, give this video a thumbs up just comment in the comment section i'm enjoying it comment it please <laughs> so i joined both sides of the shirt dress and then i was done um sewing like you guys and i don't have a weaving machine i'm planning to buy one i went over with my zigzag stitch and i locked the edge of the hem that was after i cut out the excess seam allowance now i verify my measurement again before i cut it out because i don't need sorry so now after sewing the side i'm going to go over to attach the sleeve this is just a basic sleeve and i have a detailed tutorial on how to cut this sleeve i'm going to leave a link to this tutorial in the description box in case you're interested in tutorial and i know you'll be interested so go and watch it after watching this one it's in the description box okay okay now <laughs> now i'm going to um put the sleeve in the dress i want to first of all pin it together so we'll have a neat working area and everything is well aligned by the time we get to the sewing machine so i just the center part of the sleeve i pinned it to the center part of the shoulder And I just went ahead to pin the remaining part of the sleeve to the armhole. I made sure everything was well aligned. I did this for both sides of the armhole. You know we have two armholes, right? <laughs> Before someone comes in the comment section and asks me, ah, why do you say for two armholes? Please, it's two armholes. We have two hands. You guys know that, right? <laughs> okay, so I did this for both sides. You guys know when you i also have a detailed tutorial on how to fix a sleeve i'm also going to leave that tutorial in the description box so in case you're having issues with fixing your sleeve and all that stuff i have a detailed tutorial on that as well so you want to check it out after watching this video so after pinning it together i'm just going to sew it round very simple so i took it back to my sewing machine again people of god <laughs> 
and i just joined my sleeve to my armhole at this point i was very very happy it was late in the night but i was happy because if you follow me on facebook anyways if you're not following me on facebook follow me on facebook is a stitch address follow me on instagram is a stitch address like i was saying if you follow me on facebook you know that i like to fix my sleeve last because it indicates that i'm almost done with the dress but in this point is a shirt dress i'm not done because we still have the color to fix okay but i was excited at this point mm? i was excited <laughs> I'm sure you'll be like, why is this guy hilarious today? I just want to give you guys all the energy I'm feeling today. So just just enjoy. Hit the like button if you're enjoying this tutorial. Okay? Just hit the like button. Thank you. So I took my time. As you can see, even if it's on fast forward, I actually took my time to fix this sleeve because sometimes sleeve will want to mess up your dress. And I wasn't having that. So I took my time to fix this sleeve. Good. So after I was done fixing the sleeve, I gave it a good press. So this is what we have here. It's just a basic sleeve. You can see how well relaxed it looks. Looks nice. So this is what we have here. This is the front part. This is the I think the right hand side. And this is the left hand side. Now before you proceed to do any other thing, when it comes with sleeve, you want to give the sleeve a really good press. Okay. Iron the seam, iron everything. Then this is our collar. I already have a detailed tutorial on this channel as well on how to cut and sew a two-piece collar and this is what we have here this is a two-piece collar so check the link in the description box on how to cut and sew a two-piece collar I have everything there for you guys even food in the description box check it out okay there's no food there <laughs> so uh, um, that is the collar and I'm just going to pin it to the dress now and you can see i'm pinning just one part because there's a trick to how we sew a collar so i just used my office pin some people call it affix pin whatever i call it office pin it's office pin i know and office pin it will remain thank you <laughs> so i just used my office pin and i joined it okay along that side and i'm going to after sewing i'm going to top fold it like so and top stitch when we get to the sewing machine you see what i mean so i was sewing it here with one part of the collar okay if you guys want a detailed tutorial on how to join how to fix a collar let me know i want to know if you want that tutorial so i'll just put it up for you people. so you know i love you okay so let me know i'm going to put it up for you Spe specifically for you watching this thing right now okay thank you so i joined it <laughs> with one side of the collar And when I was done joining, now I'm already folding. You can see how I'm folding and top stitching with the other side of the collar that I did not join. Do you understand? So this is what it looks like. Very simple, very easy and straightforward. Okay. okay so i was done sewing the collar i did a back stitch to secure my stitches and i was done then i took it back to my sewing table and i gave it a really good press for the collar people of god if you've not been ironing since you have to iron the collar very very well what did i say very 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 well you need a good steam iron to give it a really good press and that's what i did here so even after ironing it straight out i folded it into like the normal shape it takes when i wear the dress and i gave it a really good press again i turned to the other side and i also gave it a really good press okay so you want to do this and you guys notice that i enforce the collar with a gum stay you don't just sew your collar just like that with no enforcement nothing nothing no you have to enforce it so when i was done with the collar i went to the hem and i sealed the hem of my dress with a sealing gum i sometimes on my hem these days i'm just crazy about sealing gums so i just use the sealer gum to seal the hem and you know it gets triggered with um steam so i just used my steam iron and i sealed this together okay and i just took my time you know you have to take your time as well even if it's a gum you have to take your time so i took my time ladies and gentlemen okay 
<laughs> and I sealed it. If you don't want to seal, if you want to sew, some people still go over to sew after they use a sealing gun. But me, I instead hem it. You know, you know those hemming we do inside. I instead hem it if I'm not very sure. If I'm not sure, like it's going to come off. You know, sometimes after washing, it still comes off. So after sealing, I went over to do my buttonhole, which I did off camera. If you guys want a tutorial on how, anyway, a tutorial on how to do a buttonhole is coming up soon. So this is what the dress looks like. This is what it looked like when I was done sewing, ladies and gentlemen. Like I love this dress. I'm in love with it. It is now the love of my life. If you watch up to this point, please, please, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. My goal is to reach 50k this year, and I want you to be part of my internet home. Do come back for more videos. Okay, and tell your friends about me.